Hi, I'm Selena. Welcome to my weekly reading vlog. So since we talked last week, I have already put two books down and finished a third book. I finished Pride and Prejudice. This is my third read through of Pride and Prejudice. I love this book so much. I loved it mo more than I had the other two times I read it. This is my favorite read through of Pride and Prejudice. Everything just worked. All, everything just, mm, this read read was good. It hit in all the right places. Everything felt on time. It just worked. Everything worked so incredibly well to me. Nothing felt off. Nothing felt like it could have, like it wasn't striking with me. Oh my gosh, it was so enjoyable. It's one of my favorite books ever. And I'm so glad that this reread just confirmed that even more. Moving on to the books that I um, put down. I put down Scythe by Neil Schusterman. I was picking this up as my physical book that I was reading and I just wasn't in the mood. This is like the fourth speculative fiction YA book that I've tried to pick up this month and so I and I've put them all down and so I'm just sort of giving up on YA speculative fiction at this point like I think I'm trying to stick to more like literary fiction or contemporary for now I'm still gonna try and read Scythe this month whereas the others I've just like pushed away but like Scythe I would still like to try and read because I actually did enjoy the first chapter it's just I wasn't like into it yeah I'm gonna try that one on audio flipping back and forth between audio and physical and so that will be that and then I also put down Ray Bear by Jordan e. Fuego. I was listening to this on audiobook I requested my library to get this they got it I got it to read this month and I was enjoying it there was nothing wrong with the book I just put it down because audiobooks aren't really working for me at this point in my life I go through phases with audiobooks where I like love them and can't live without them and like I can't believe I ever stopped listening to them or never didn't listen to them in my life and then I go through phases where I'm like I could do without audiobooks I could just read physically and I want to listen to music when I'm doing something like walking or cleaning or cooking or something and I just I the audiobooks haven't been my favorite medium to consume books through at this point and I think part of that is because since um I'm you know I'm back at school usually I listen to audiobooks a ton when I'm at school because it's just easier and also like I walk a lot when I'm at school like clean and cook a lot more when I'm at school like it's just the it's, it's just I'm more, I'm more busy um and so audiobooks have been a great way for me to read while doing a lot of those things um and feeling that time with not just like mindless walking or something um, but since I am not doing like in-person classes, I'm not leaving my house, um, I'm not having as much of a need for audiobooks and so I'm not getting through them as fast and so I tend to not be as into them and I, there's just something also about my attention span right now. I think this is kind of like a lot of people but also I'm just having a really hard time paying attention to audiobooks and so like I haven't wanted to like I haven't been able to pay attention. Like I was listening to Ray Bearer, I knew I was missing some things and I was like, this is just not fair for this book. I was so excited for this book. This book is a good book, clearly. I will get so much more out of this book by waiting and reading it physically when I can, you know, afford to get the physical copy like a little bit farther down the road than I will listening to this on audiobook, missing things, not really enjoying the medium. And so I just didn't feel like doing that to myself or to that book or that author. And so I decided to pick it up another time when I'm, you know, able to consume it in the medium that is best for me at that time. Right now, audiobook is my only choice and it's not a good choice for me right now. And so sadly, I've had to put that down. And so what I'm doing for audiobooks then is I'm only picking up either really short audiobooks that I can get through, like really pretty quickly or I'm picking up books where I can flip back and forth between the audio and the physical and I'm doing that with the book right now and that book is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman I am 78 pages into this book um, and it's good so far it's wild there's like a lot of different connections and like it's a very intricate plot character situation um, I don't I can't even tell you what it's about really yet um, what it seems to be about is this bank robber who tried to rob a bank and ended up accidentally taking some people hostage. Um, but this robber, this hostage situation 
is weird. Like something's not right. Things aren't adding up. And so you follow the people, you follow the bank robber, you follow the the hostages, you follow the policeman working on the case, and like tr you're trying to put together what went down, like what has gone down. Very typical Bankman in that he goes into like a lot of different characters and like a very omniscient point of view. It's it, nothing is ever just a bank robbery or something like everything is connected to something deep and personal or like other aspects of like your life, like other other parts of your life connected to other people. Like nothing stands on its own in a Bachman book. And I really like that because it reflects life. Like everything is connected. And I've always loved that theme. And so I love when Bachman explores how other people have influence on other on, on people. And so that's happening so far. That's really good. I don't know, it's good so far. It's It's got like a more humorous tone to it, but it's really talking about like really deep, subjects and so i don't know it's interesting um i'm gonna keep reading and i'll update you when i you know have more to say about this later in the week and then when i put down side i picked up a new book that i got to read just like physically anxious people i'm kind of flipping back and forth me audio and physical and that book is more happy than not by adam silvera so what i know about this book is this is about a teen boy who has Kind of a hard he's had kind of a hard time his father committed suicide he um has just had a rough go with his family like with his father's death um things are not you know never gonna be normal again he's got this great girlfriend though but he starts to have feelings for someone else and so he in in his world there's a procedure where you can have some of your memories taken away and he wants those memories to be taken away he wants to just get rid of some things so that he can be happy and just sort of live his life in the way that he thinks will make him happiest and he thinks that like not having those memories will you know help with that i am currently 217 pages into this book i have mixed feelings and they're not like totally mixed like i really enjoy this book i really enjoy our main character i just think it's such an interesting concept such interesting themes like thematically this book is brilliant plot wise this book was brilliant some things just went down the way this story was told or has been told so far and i'm 200 pages in is masterful like i cannot even believe that this was adam silvera's debut this is like masterfully written and if i were 17 it would be my favorite book and that's not me being like oh it's YA. i don't read YA. i love ya and i have tons of favorites that are ya this sort of book is something that i would have gotten more out of at 17 not only due to like personal experiences and things like that but also just because I wanted this. I wanted something a little weird. I wanted something a little experimental. I wanted something different. I wanted why that felt different. And I also had a lot more patience for character driven books with not super, like not a huge plot. And everything about this book would have made it my absolute favorite book. I would have loved it so much. And I still really, really enjoy it. Like I love this book. Objectively, this book is amazing. But also I'm not sure that I have as much love for the sort of character driven slow dense character story with a lot of really hard graphic topics in it um i still love dark contemporaries but i generally need them to be a bit less dense than this a bit less character focused than this um i still still tend to need a plot um just for like why and stuff and so i don't know this is a weird experience it's encaptured me and raptured me like it like almost as much as it would have if i were a teen but also I know I don't love it as much as I would if this were, you know, if I were 17 year old Selena. Um, and so it's an odd experience. It's like reading what could have been your favorite book past its time. And I don't know how else to describe it, my experience reading this other than that. Well, this has been a beginning of the week check-in and I will see you in the middle of the week.
Friday, September 18th at this point, and it is time for an end of the week check-in. I didn't do very well with updating you this week, but I did finish some things, so we're gonna talk about that. I also have a special guest, Mason, my boyfriend, he's here. He's taking over the channel. Right? Always, yeah. Always, yeah. And so we're gonna talk about the first book that I finished this week, or the first book I finished since we last talked, and that is More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. Um, this one was really good. I enjoyed it. It is a hard-hitting YA contemporary LGBTQ plus fiction. It is very dark and twisted, and I genuinely think that Adam Silvera's storytelling was really just masterfully done. Like, I don't think this book could have been told a different way. I think the way the plot worked was really good. I think that Adam Silvera tells LGBTQ plus stories in a way or he talks about things that people don't talk about and he goes darker than you expect him to um but his stories are always very real and raw and i think that someone needs to tell these stories and i'm glad that these stories exist i know that 16 year old me would have loved this book it would have been my favorite book if i was still 16 and you know still trying to figure things out as it is now um i still think this is a great book but it's not exactly the kind of book that I love to read. Like I tend to like things to be a bit more fast paced, a bit more plot driven than this. This is very character driven. Um, but for a character driven book, this was really just well done, amazingly done. And so I'm gonna give it four stars. It's not a five star. I didn't desperately love it like I would have had I discovered this at age 16, but I still really, really enjoyed it. And it's a good book, highly recommend it but there's a ton of trigger warnings. I will be putting them in the hmm, pinned comment. That's where I put trigger warnings. And then I wanted to bring Mason on to talk about the other thing I finished this week and pull it up, Mason, what is it? It is Check Please Volume 2, Sticks and Scones. Um, okay, so this is a the second book in a graphic novel series. This used to be a webcomic, if you don't know. It is about, what would you say it's about, Mason? Gay hockey. Gay hockey. It's about a college hockey team. We follow Eric Biddle, who is gay, um, and not super, like, stereotypically masculine, but, like, none of them are with the sort of toxic masculinity that people think of when they think of, like, hockey teams and college sports and everything like that. And so we follow a very not typical hockey team. And that's great because we are following a gay main character who has to sort of fit in. Um, and, you know, just he has he has this this group that is amazing for him. Um, and so he gets to rise. We watch him as he rises to the ranks. This is um, his final two years at college, Samuel University. And we get to watch him navigate a secret relationship that he's in yeah um this was really good i liked it a lot better than the first volume on the first volume really quickly i've actually read most of this comic before reading them in the graphic novel form i read them when they were just a web comic and they were still coming out i read about up until the very beginning of year four so about halfway through this book i caught up to where i had not read yet um the first volume of this i was kind i was interested i liked it it was fun it was cute but I did feel like there were some pacing issues. This book, I, it's a little bit longer, it's thicker than the first one, and the pacing issues were mostly gone. I really feel like over the course of the four years of Biddy's um, university, you can see Ngozi Yukazu grow as a writer of a, of like a pl and plotter of graphic, graphic novels and comics. So I really enjoyed that. I thought that we, had a lot more depth and we could sit in little moments a lot more. Like I thought that the first volume rushed through things sometimes or it felt a little bit rushed. Um, but that makes sense because it was coming out in little short increments. Whereas like this one, it really felt like I was getting a lot of substance in each panel. Um, and I feel like it just was really paced really well. And Ghost of Yukazu has always been really good at showing lots of things happening at once in the same panel and that is just still good it was really cute it was really fun it made me cry multiple times mason loved it do you want to say anything about it um just i've read it in full twice now because i read it the entire thing over selena's shoulder when she was doing it um and i just every time i'm still like emotionally invested and it's so funny too it's beautiful it's funny also look how cute betty is just like look at that face 
Like, what is up with that? No, it should not be allowed for him to Short, be that adorable. blonde boy. He's not blonde. He's blonde. That's ginger. He is blonde. That's ginger. That is blonde. Tell us, is Biddy blonde or ginger? Anyways, is that all you want to say about Jack, please? I think we have differences of opinions. On the hair. What did you give it? What was your rating? Mine was a four star. Again, I gave um, it five stars because you of gave my it, genre. He gave it five stars. He loves it. What's the purpose of plot? Like, what does this really do? Like, what? If there's not love, what are you doing? Or friendships? Like, because I can, I can okay. do a not, I can do a book without like romantic love as long as there's good character relationships. Well, if you like good character relationships and books with love. Check Please has both of them. There's amazing friendships, a whole fun crew, and there's cute romance. And then I have, have not made too much um, progress in the book I'm reading. That is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I'm only 88 pages in, and I'm still really enjoying it. I just have not had time to really get in and figure out how I like it. I'm so to read Check Please in all, all in one day. Mm -hmm. Mason took all my reading time yesterday to um, make me read Check Please. Anyways, so, so I haven't done much reading, but I hope to read Anxious People today and also start The Sign of the Four, which is the next book in the Sherlock Holmes series, but we will see if that happens. I need to edit this to get this vlog up tomorrow. Hopefully next week I will have a better vlog for you. Thank you for watching this weekly vlog. These are the things that I was reading this week, and I will talk to you next week. Hi. Bye.